Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Zelda Inquiries. I know it's been four months, I deeply apologize. Uh, this series was supposed to happen at least once a month, and, well, that didn't happen. <laughs> but, you know, we're back, and we have a good reason to be back, because the Breath of the Wild DLC is coming up. But before we get into uh, talking in depth about that, I want to introduce our two guests this week, or this month, or whatever, however often we're going to do this. We got Game Over Jesse on. Glad to be here. You guys might know him. He does some YouTube videos. He's worked at all the various Zelda fan sites or the big Zelda fan sites out there in the past. Uh, and then we have Dreamcast Guy, who I literally just met 10 minutes ago. Hi. I'm just a random YouTuber as well. Hello. Exactly. And I'll have links and everything down to their channel in the description if you guys want to go to it. And also in the video, we'll have your handles so people can go follow you wherever. Now, we're here to talk Zelda, right? That's what this show is all about. Mm -hmm. And. We have some DLC coming out this Friday. The first, well, kind of sort of the first ever DLC for Zelda. Um, there has been a few other downloadable things in the past, but this is like the first literal you pay for it, here you go. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just hop right into our expectations of this DLC. I mean, we get a master mode, trial of the sword, mm -hmm. new costumes. You know, how excited are you guys for this DLC? Uh, very, very yeah. excited. I, I think it's going to be awesome. It, is giving a huge insight into what we can expect, not just from the Zelda team, but Nintendo in the future, because aside from Smash Brothers and Mario Kart, this is the first time Nintendo's like put a focus on DLC, especially in this way, on like a single-player game. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's also so interesting, because Nintendo's always kind of been the king of creativity. They do what nobody expects, so even when it comes to DLC like this, something we all expect will be real simple, even now, it looks pretty much like it's going to be crazy and wild and something we're not expecting at all. And I keep saying expect. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's interesting. They, you know, Nintendo has been dabbling in a DLC, especially during the Wii U era. But this is like the first time, you know, they've really taken like a single player game and given it a huge injection of paid DLC. Because uh, multiplayer games, I think, always kind of made sense. You know, adding adding new carts and new racers and new racetracks. Like, that's just common. That's what people do in multiplayer games. That's mm -hmm. how you keep them, to keep the community thriving. But single player games are always different. You know, you, you think of really good single player DLC out there. Uh, sometimes it's hard to, to think of games that have good single player DLC. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so many of those single player games these days... Do that day one DLC thing. I hate. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like, why am I paying like 20 bucks extra for day one DLC? Why isn't that in the game? Uh, but that's not what happened here. We, we have like a master mode, which looks crazy. Looks totally crazy. I, I don't know how I'm in an off the great plateau, to be honest. Um, like this, this Friday when the DLC comes out, you know, we'll be doing a live stream and I'm going to have some regular live stream days where I try to 100% master mode from the very beginning. And just watching the Treehouse people during E3 die on the Great Plateau when they already have two Divine Beasts down and gear and ten hearts, I'm like, what? what's happening? <laughs> Outside of the fact that they're just bad at Zelda. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's, it's definitely interesting. I'm so curious to see how they're going to tune it up because... I always like Breath of the Wild a lot because it's such an interesting type of difficulty. You're not only dealing with breaking weapons, but also dealing with cooking and uh, item management. It's so interesting. I'm kind of super, super uh, interested to see how they're going to make this super, super hard for the entire game without just absolutely breaking it. Because they're pretty good at balancing things out. Yeah, and I think most of the game, it's going to be pretty balanced, I feel. Uh it's the Great Plateau at the very beginning. I don't know how they're going to be able to balance that. When you're like, regenerating health mm -hmm. uh, and you have items that break, and the items aren't getting any stronger, so they're going to break even faster. Mm -hmm. it, oh, man. <laughs> that That's the only part that I'm not looking forward to because I, I think the rest of the game will be fine because you, know, you gear up as fast as you want, you get as good as you want, but, man, regenerating health in the Great Plateau and you're not going to have enough items to take out a purple Bokoblin is going to be crazy. I, like, the bomb and run technique doesn't work <laughs> when the health is regening. True. <laughs> so. it, it, it makes me excited. I, I think it'll definitely make the starting of the game more interesting, but it gets mm, me yes. excited after you've got a couple of the Divine Beasts already 
oh, yeah. done, and then like suddenly Link starting to feel overpowered. Not only do you have like an instant mm-hmm. fairy, um, sure from Mifa's grace that kind of brings you back to life when you die. You have uh-huh. Daruk's protection that can just like instantly reverse any attack, and yep. you just really quickly become overpowered in the game and I think this is going to bring the enemies up to your level. It may be more difficult at the beginning but I think it'll start to even out after a couple of Divine Beasts which is what I'm interested in. I think it's going to even out but obviously you know anyone who's played to to, to the end of the game and you know faced off against like Silver Lionels and Calamity Mm -hmm. Ganon well what I'm actually interested in is like yeah they have Gold Lionels now which I I mean, I know some people are like, oh, but silver liners are so easy. I'm like, yeah, but have you, have you fought a gold one yet? <laughs> um, once you figure out the strap for the silver, that doesn't mean that same strategy is going to work on a gold. You don't know. We haven't played them. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I'm interested in, it's something they haven't talked about, and it's the only thing I am actually concerned about with this DLC pack. They have not said that Calamity Ganon or the bosses get harder. Mm-hmm. And if they don't get harder, that's going to be disappointing. I imagine if they do, I I've imagine I imagine that it's gonna be like twenty percent harder. Everything else is getting like twice as hard because I know that some people because I I was cruising around the forums a lot when uh, Breath of the Wild first came out and there were a lot of people complaining that the bosses didn't explain themselves very well that they they'd find it really hard until they figured it out and then it'd be really easy. So I think yeah. that they're they might be a little bit nervous about like doubling somebody's health and just hoping that the same crowd that barely beat it the first time is going to have any chance of beating even one dungeon in this new mode. Well, to be fair, though, this new mode, I mean, this isn't supposed to be for those people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but but you know how it is. I- anybody who's selling downloadable content, you want you want the biggest crowd possible to not be mad sure. at it. Well, it's not too hard for them not... Uh, I guess I look at it as... Um, as far as I'm, a, I'm aware, there's no way to buy this DLC pack on its own, right? You have to buy the twin pack, right? The season pass uh, is I, I I don't even I have no idea. Yeah, you, you yeah, have to I'm, buy yeah. the full expansion pass for the twenty dollars, and then yeah. you get DLC pack one, DLC pack two, and instant access mm-hmm. to the bonus items. Yeah, so mm-hmm. so I think that they are. I I think the crowd that 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 struggled with the boss. I mean, I'm not among that crowd, but again, like. You know, I'm, Zelda's kind of my thing. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we're all big Zelda fans here, so like, yeah, yeah. we personally aren't going to be one the, the crowd that's going to struggle with that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it, when I look at Master Mode, I look at it as, that's a mode for me. That's a, mm-hmm. that's a mode for the veterans who found the game to be pretty easy in the first place when it came to the dungeons and the bosses. And when they take those bosses, and they don't change them, but the rest of the game is really hard, you know, there's already, you know, this odd going theme in the game that a Silver Lionel is harder than Calamity Ganon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that, that shouldn't exist. That should, <laughs> Calamity Ganon should be the hardest thing in the game. Uh, but he's really not, especially if you beat the four Divine Beasts. Then he's, like, almost a joke because half the fight's already over before you get to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's I, fine. I mean, you could make you could obviously make it a challenge. If you try to go straight to Calamity Ganon at the start, that obviously makes it a lot more difficult. Mm-hmm. But it's... It's one of those things where that difficulty of going to him right at the start, that's almost an artificial difficulty because that's not the way the game wants you to do it. You're mm-hmm. just, you as a player, it's kind of like players like doing three heart runs. You're making the game more difficult. Yeah. The mm-hmm. game itself doesn't actually want you to play it that way. Uh, so if you play Breath of the Wild the way they want you to, which is taking out the Divine Beast and caring about the story and doing all this exploration stuff, by the time you get to Calamity again, and you're just really overpowered. Uh, and he's he's a joke. Like, I, I went into the Calamity Ganon fight my first time thinking, okay, well, I should probably have, you know, a whole bunch of ancient arrows, which turn out to be useless <laughs> against him. But whatever, I had, like, 50 of them. Um, yeah. I, I should make sure I'm fully stocked at least 50-plus on all my arrows. I should have the best armor in the game. I should do this and that, because this fight's going to be hard. Like, I fought, I fought a Silver Lionel. That was difficult. Mm-hmm. I better have... You know, this has got to be like the hardest fight in the game, and it it it, it wasn't. It was kind of a joke, mm-hmm. um, especially. I don't know why they even included the beast mode. To be honest, mm-hmm. um, that's not even a fight. I I don't even know what they. I don't know. I don't know whose idea that was. It was yeah, not a good the, one. Yeah, uh, the like the beast Ganon and Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time just made mm-hmm. it feel more epic. But then the beast mm-hmm. Ganon in this one's just like what? What well, is this? Like, yeah, shoot the at least target? the one there that like. Like, it was a QTE event, basically, in Twilight Princess. Yeah. But at least it was like, if you didn't hit the buttons, you could die. This one's like, 
No, you're only dying if you just stand there and let him <laughs> hit you with his beam right in front of his face. He doesn't yeah. turn to face you. He faces the same direction the whole time. Yeah. He doesn't walk on... He does nothing. He just stands and there. And he's so it's, huge, it's, it could have been, like, a really epic fight. It's yeah. it's very very cinematographic. It looks good in trailers. Yes, it looks good. It just isn't good gameplay-wise. I, like they, I feel like I wish they should have did what they did with Ocarina of Time and actually had it be... Like, I always felt... The last phase of you know Ganondorf in uh-huh. Ocarina of Time wasn't difficult, as difficult as the phase before, but uh-huh. at least there was a challenge and like an epicness to it. This oh, is like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is epic, <laughs> and then you're like, but it's not. There, there's no challenge. There's nothing. Well, it also. Yeah, I feel Orca- like if they would have done it more of a. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, oh, yeah, I think we started right. talking at the same time, but I feel like it would have been perfect if they would have done something similar to Shadow of the Colossus where suddenly oh. like there's this huge beast Ganon and you're having to try to climb up on top of it or something. Uh, sure. simi- they did something similar with uh, Twilight Princess uh, Argorok. Was that his name? The dragon? Yep. And then yep. uh, Morphil where you had to like it very very to me very similar to uh, some of the stuff you were doing in Shadow of the Colossus where you have well, to plus, uh, attach on to like a certain part and stab it which is what you did on both of those so the f- plus you have fights even in Breath of the Wild like w- any anytime you fight like a stone talus or um, you know e- even one of the Hinoxes like you can climb them yeah you you can mm-hmm. hit them in different ways and approach them in different ways there you can't climb Calamity Ganon like at yeah. all you could sometimes fly and land on top of them, but that just doesn't give you any advantage at all. Yeah. You can um, ride them like a horse, though, and that's super cool. <laughs> right, right. Um, it, oh, it would have been interesting, too, if they upgraded the stables to let you just stable anything that you can mount. Yeah. That would have been awesome. They should have, that, would have been uh, that, that would have been something that would have got a lot of people excited for DLC. Because, like, especially if you're someone who, like, mounted a bear, they're, they're so slow. Yeah, because it's if you, like if you if you got it to a stable, you should be rewarded. Yeah, like <laughs> I I could see them like in the beginning being like, no, it'll be too odd if you let them but, yeah. like put a but bear in, in a stable. Yeah, and then it's yeah. like, oh, due to fan feedback, yeah. we know you or want like this, have side so quests that upgrade your stable to to yeah. hold more than horses. So, yeah. Something like that, I would not be shocked at all if that was a free update down the road. I really foresee Nintendo really sticking with Breath of the Wild and riding it as long as they can, so yeah. I imagine there's going to be a lot of free updates rolled out alongside DLC. I, I think, like, and we'll get into this later, because um, mm-hmm. it's a later topic, but yep. this DLC pack 1 and 2, I think... Mm-hmm. If it does really well, then next year we can see DLC pack three and four. Yep, one hundred percent. Yes, yeah, absolutely. maybe that's good. That, I I so, fully believe that's going to happen. Yeah. So so before we get more into the the future of Zelda here, uh, obviously with, with this DLC pack, no one thing I want to know is, is what about this this first one coming out this week? Uh, what's the part of it you're looking forward to the most? Is it like Trial of Sword? The, was it 46 rooms, I think, or 48? Uh-huh. I can't remember the exact yeah, number. Yeah, 46, I believe. Um, is, you know, is it the master mode? Is it the new costumes? It, it's definitely the trial of the sword for me, personally. It just looks so cool. And I loved uh, I, the name of the island is escaping me, but the island shrine where you're having to run around naked and actually, like, slowly Eventide. build up. That's so cool. And that was that was definitely my favorite part of the entire game, probably, because it was actually the last thing I did in my playthrough. Was It just oh, happened to be that <laughs> island. So it, it, it really changed how I ended up looking at the whole game of, like, I got so reliant on having my Master Sword and having all this plus damage gear that suddenly yep. having none of it really made me rethink combat. So the fact that I'm going to have an entire basic section of the game completely devoted to that challenge is incredibly cool to me. Yeah. Wasn't Eventide Island supposed to be, like, a throwback to Link's Awakening? It, yes. If it is, that's actually yeah. my favorite. One of my favorite Zeldas. So uh, that I maybe that's the reason I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I remember uh, when I first went to Eventide Island. I, I had, I had only been to Kakariko Village at that time, mm-hmm. uh, and I was just busy exploring, right? And I saw shrines off in the distance. I saw that one shrine on the cliff, and then all of a sudden, there's that shrine down in the middle of the water that ended up being like a harder difficulty battle shrine, which I definitely was not ready for. Uh So here I am for the first time ever using my amiibo to try to get some extra gear for that fight. (laughs) I finally get that fight down, and all of a sudden I'm like, dude, there's an island off over there. There's a raft here. Why don't I go check that out? 
Mm-hmm. And when I got there, I'm like, well, no. <laughs> oh, it strips all your items. I'm like, well, if it strips all your items, I'm like, how hard can it really be, right? How hard can it be? Um, oh, that's the first time I ever saw a Hinox ever. Um, <laughs> for first time that I really experienced like a, a full base of things, like where they have moblins and like I, ha- I hadn't explored enough to find bases like this. I've never even this is the first time I saw moblins, and this was before all the updates. So like the moblins were making things lag really, really bad. <laughs> God, that and it's like a base of like two moblins and like I don't what was it six or eight vocal blends and i'm like i don't know what to do what am i supposed to do they didn't tell me what am i okay there's this hole i bet there's gotta be something that goes in these holes what what am i even looking for Mm -hmm. i i had never really even used stasis much outside of the great plateau so like there's that one part where you got to move the the rock off the off the top of the thing i had no idea you could even do that Mm -hmm. (laughs) i was on that island for like seven hours trying to figure out how to to even what what i'm even supposed to do Mm -hmm. um and that that but that's actually what made it so great to me was just you experience, I experienced that so early on, it kind of set the table for the rest of the game. We're like, I just don't know what this game's going to throw at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, um, I found it very early on, uh, before I had met any of the Divine Beasts. I think it mm-hmm. was uh, like maybe a few hours after reaching Kakariko Village. And then I found that island, and I had no clue that it was going to do any of that. And I got in mm-hmm. there, and I was like, where did all my stuff go? <laughs> like, what's going on? Well, I'm, I'm scared to take that island on yeah. in master mode. And then uh, I, I made the mistake of uh, there's one of the parts where somehow carrying the ball back to the place where you have to sit it in, it somehow wound up in the water. And every time I tried to grab it, it would knock it further and further back into the water. Uh-huh. And once you go out so far uh, from the island, it'll just reset the entire island so, oh, so I, frustrating. Uh, yeah i i had uh, so many difficulties with it but it's all difficulties yeah. that's like you should have been smart enough to not do this mm-hmm. yeah that's that's the thing like when you discover it that early you know and, and i don't know because you know dreamcast guy over there he discovered it later in the game it's so, true, it's true. you know a, a lot of the abilities we had like cryonis and stuff i have barely been using that stuff mm-hmm so, so many of the people, like, when I when I brought that orb over to that little little island part on, on Eventide, mm-hmm. I did it where, you know, because there, there, there's a raft on the island you can go get. Mm-hmm. I literally got on that raft and brought it over <laughs> to create the bridge to put the orb over there. And mm-hmm. I was like, this is taking me so long. Why don't you use Cryonis? I'm like, what the heck is Cryonis? <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've <laughs> like, had a few I totally forgot like I that. even, like, I even have that ability. Oh, you mean that? And later on, you know, I did shrines where I'm like, oh, yeah, duh, you lift things with it. And I lifted mm-hmm. balls. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that would have been so much easier. But yeah. I just, I hadn't wrapped my mind around the fact that, like, this game is built around all these abilities you have. Mm-hmm. And I, the, sadly, the first time when I played through it, it was kind of like, I, I kind of played the game where I basically, the only ability I used was bombs. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you, that's <laughs> base, That's most of what I did, too. I used uh, that in magnetism. I, like, whenever I could, mm-hmm. I'd just pick up stuff and just battering ram. And that's why I cleared that island. That island took me about an hour, yeah. even with all my hearts and stamina, just because even still, as soon as you die, you're back on shore of the uh, the mainland. So, oh. I mean, I, I could pick up boxes and slam people a bit, but as soon as it cracked, all of a sudden I'm like, well, hi, guys, uh, please don't murder me. Yeah, yeah I'm feeling that's how I'm going to approach everything in master mode is uh, on, in the beginning areas. I'm like, all right, where's the metal box? Okay, that's how I'm killing <laughs> yeah. everything. Yeah. That's why I'm <laughs> excited for the Trial of the Sword, because mm-hmm. it, like, they showed a few of the rooms off, and it's not anything like, uh, what was it, the, that, the DLC thing that they added with the Wolf Link amiibo to Twilight Princess. And then, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. There yeah. Was Tower the or whatever sim- the hell. Yeah, there was the similar room in Wind Waker, where it was just like, going down deeper and deeper into the cave or whatever. Sure. Cave of Ordeals or whatever Co- they call Cave it. of Ordeals, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the one in Twilight Princess. Yeah. yeah, so, like, where every room kind of looked the same in those, it showed, yeah, no, like, yeah. all the rooms yeah. that they showed us looked different. Like, there was some where you had to use the wind and the 
Ah, oh, sailcloth, the paraglider. Yeah, that's it. Yep. How to use the paraglider to get from like one side of the room to the other. And the first room that you start out in has trees and stuff you can climb. Yeah, in. So, it reminds you of the Great Plateau. Yeah, yeah. So like, if they have rooms to where you're not just fighting enemies, but you are clearing out some puzzles, I think that'll be enough to satisfy those people who were wanting like traditional themed dungeons in mm -hmm. uh, Breath of the Wild. Almost said Twilight Princess, but. <laughs> to where, like, if they have a room that you go into and there's a bunch of enemies on the other side, but then you have no idea how to get to the other side of the room, I think that'll satisfy those people that are craving, like, going into a new room, seeing a challenge or a puzzle, mm -hmm. not knowing how to do it. Because in Twilight Princess, especially, like, you go into the room, there's enemies, you kill them, go down, kill the next set of enemies. With this, like, it pretty much is laid out sort of like you would expect a traditional temple style dungeon in a Zelda game so I'm excited yeah, for sure. that you bring up a good point Jesse which is I think the best thing that's going to happen with this DLC is that the, it's going to really it's going to really encourage and bring the community back because I know a lot of people have already kind of stepped away from Breath of the Wild a lot of us are still playing it but people did step away because they're just they beat it and they were looking for more to come back and I'm I'm so excited to see all the new stuff that's going to come out because I just love all the crazy Zelda videos. Like, one thing I'm actually the most excited about, and this is just weird because it doesn't even really fully involve me, but I love watching the Zelda Breath of the Wild speedruns. They are so cool. Oh, and I'm yeah. already so pumped to see the hero mode <laughs> speedruns. There is going to be people, like, flipping off logs and flying across the map and stabbing Gelda, Zelda in the eye somehow by accident. It's going to be great. <laughs> Yeah, that, that reminds me, in, in the hard mode, or the master mode, they're going to have those floating platforms where, like, mm -hmm. yeah, for no reasonable, logical explanation, but there's a Hinox, for some reason, had some mm -hmm. whatever guts and is flying up on a log trying to kill you. That's so great! Oh my gosh, that, that the, one yeah. clip, those 11 seconds got me more hyped than yeah. it really should have. And then oh. the thought of, like, being somewhere fighting a golden uh, Lionel, and then another golden Lionel just falls from the sky. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, this is like... Well, I, I think one thing Master Mode's gonna do for, for some of the veterans out there that felt like the game was too empty is it fixes that problem. Mm -hmm. um, just based on what we even saw of them in the Great Plateau, like, you could hardly move in the Great Plateau without running into something. Because mm -hmm. there's new enemies everywhere. Oh, remember that water you just kind of swam across to get to the first mm -hmm. shrine? Nope, there's two floating platforms and you're getting shot at by arrows. Good mm -hmm. luck. <laughs> it's like, that's at the beginning of the game. The rest of the game, it, it it's crazy what what they're doing. Like, yeah. they, they've, they're not, they're not necessarily fixing the enemy variety. Mm -hmm. I know some people wish that there was more variety. But, they are increasing the difficulty in new and unique ways that are going to make you, oh, I have to look up now. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm getting hit. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, chests and stuff, I believe, yep. on the yep. platforms. Yeah. There, there definitely are. The, the moment that they have, the, there's got probably an area that's going to have like three golden lionels just shooting at you, floating up. And I don't know, like the only way to get up there, you know, say... They're, they're too far out of the range of your arrows, so you can't hit it, so like you have to create your own floating platform to get up there. Yeah. Oh, God. I would love if they did something like that, where you have to get that creative to take them out. Because that well, is, that is such a high skill level to do that. Well, I, I'm already imagining that I'm going to, like, uh, you know, the seesaw trick where you, like, set a chest down, put a log, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. stand on top of the oh, drop yeah. up. But I'm t already picturing, like, purposely just spending hours setting up the perfect scenario where I can sit there and right as those jerks come up on their little balloon, <laughs> get ready to, I just launch up there like, surprise, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's, not only is it going to make the game more challenging, but it's going to make it, like, more unexpected. I can't really yeah. think of the word that I'm trying to use, but it, it's yeah. going to make everything like a bit more entertaining. Just because, like, if you're up in like a snowy mountain, then there could be like nothing around in the normal mode, but suddenly there's like floating enemies everywhere, and you, you have to look up and be like, "What is that? <laughs> like, is it a Lionel shooting at me, or is it just a stupid bacoblin?" Mm hmm. Yeah, it's it's very interesting. Uh, obviously, my favorite part of it is 
you know, Trial of the Sword looks really interesting. The, the the only thing, the only reason that's not at the top of my list is just because I haven't seen enough of it yet. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be awesome based on what we have seen. But what we have seen seems so simple and basic, uh, and it should be. Those are the first rooms out of forty plus yeah. rooms. Like, obviously, it has to start out where you're able to gear up a little bit. Um, so I'm really interested in like the idea of doing that in master mode. It's just going to be crazy. But it's really the master mode that excites me the most because I, you know, <laughs> there was someone who commented on uh, a video I made the other day because it, I went into the profile on my Switch and it showed I only had 45 hours played on Breath of the Wild. They're like, how do you only have 45? <laughs> I'm like, well, because I knew master mode was coming. Mm-hmm. So I know based on the, how much time I get to play games, I'm only 100%ing this game one time. Mm-hmm. And I would have been mad if I would have 100%ed it before Master Mode came out, because that means I didn't technically do everything, and I got to do it all over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's like, yeah, I'm going to sink hundreds of hours in in Master Mode. Uh, that's, so <laughs> that's how I, that's how it was with the Korok seeds. A friend of mine was like obsessed with all the Korok seeds, and I was like, I beat all the shrines. I'm really happy with that. I beat all the dungeons. I got all the best gear. I'll worry about the Korok seeds when there's actually going to be platforms floating up and new enemies <laughs> dropping down while I'm trying to solve these basic little puzzles for, like, little forest sure. imps. Yeah, see, I, I save so much content. Like, I only did, like, 40 shrines, and... Mm-hmm. I mean, I beat all the Divine Beasts and Climbing Again, and also... Mm-hmm. I didn't even find all the memories, because I'm just like, look... Oh, yeah, I have nothing I, Like, I got to a point where I was basically so geared up that... I, um... It, I guess it's one, maybe one of the complaints of Breath of the Wild. Sometimes you get to this point where you're so geared up that you just don't want to fight. You just avoid fighting things. Yeah, yeah. You start just um, basically walking around, just being like because oh. one, they're not going to kill you, and two, your items. You just don't want to waste your items on it. Yeah. Um. So it, it's just when it, once it got to that point, and there really wasn't a challenge to me fighting them anymore, and the items they dropped weren't going to be any better than what I had, or even close. So I was like, eh. I sort of avoid. I'm like, okay, well, I've done what I wanted to do. There's more I want to see. Like, I haven't even fully explored the map, but I don't care. That's what, in master mode, I'm doing everything. Uh-huh. Like, everything you could possibly do in the game because there isn't going to be, like, an, a harder mode coming out. This is it. And so any content that's added to the game after that, I could just play it through master mode. Yeah. Uh, and that's maybe a good segue into the other DLC coming this year. Mm-hmm. The, what is it? Wait, really quick? Because there is one yeah. other thing that I'm sure a lot of people will want to hear. What's everybody's favorite armor or mask that's coming out of the DLC pack one? Um, The only thing that really jumped out at me was the Majora's Mask one. I'm a huge fan of that game. The rest of the (laughs) stuff was cool for fans, and I'm sure people are going to enjoy it, but the rest just wasn't for me. But that one specifically, it just looks so high resolution. Like, it just (laughs) clearly... It it seemed like they went back and based it on, like, unreleased concept drawings. It just looked so interesting and new, but classic. Man, totally won me over instantly. The problem with that Majora's Mask one... Uh-huh. It makes me want Majora's Mask HD. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I'm so still... Like, the, the 3DS oh. version actually was already... Like, obviously, it's only 240p, I think, is the resolution, yeah, technically. Yeah, it's still really good. Yeah, I, I, I actually so good. made a comparison video where I ran it on the emulator, yep. and yep. I compared, like, the original version to a 4K version, and... Like, I know the Switch isn't capable of 4K, but just rendering it in, like, 720 or 1080p just for, like, Mm -hmm. basic HD would be so amazing. Because the game, like, the textures and everything looks great. It's just the resolution is so low on the 3DS. But it looks amazing. Fantastic. Like, they they wouldn't even have to remake the game. They could just port the 3DS version over and it would look great. Mm -hmm. Sure. I feel like... uh, So, so thinking of my favorite new mask or costume thing, I'm going to go with the Phantom uh, costume. Mm-hmm. Not because I'm a big fan of the game. I, mean, I love Spirit Tracks. I, I do not like Phantom Hourglass. I don't know why I'm a polar opposite ends of that. It's just how it's always been. But uh, the reason is not just because it looks cool and it's a full armor get up. It actually like feels like it almost fits in the game because it has a purpose. Like it has mm-hmm. attack power plus. Yeah, um, and I whereas like the other items are either just purely cosmetic, or ones like to help me find Korok seeds. And I'm gonna be honest right now. I'm looking at a Korok seed map when I play Master Mode. Yeah. It's just it's just happening. I'm going to know where the Korok seeds are. I'm not going to need to use... And I also go, well, that takes away some of the adventure. I'm like, yeah, but I, I don't have 900 hours to play this game. <laughs> you know, I already know it's probably going to take me 300 just to do all of the 
all the quests and now the new master mode plus we know the new dlc coming um, it's going to add all new content so it's like i already know i'm going to be sinking hundreds of hours and i don't have you know forever to just try to figure out where everything is on my own yeah and i know for some people that's like, that takes away i'm like no for me it would suck knowing that I've reached a point where I got to start playing Odyssey. I got to start playing more Splatoon 2. I got to start playing, mm -hmm. you know, Fire Emblem Warriors. I got to start playing all these other Nintendo games and knowing in the back of my mind that I'm never going to 100% Breath of the Wild because I didn't, you know, I, I, I was too elite to look at a map. Um, so I already know Korok Seed wise, I'm, I'm cheating because I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> the puzzle part, I'm not going to cheat, like figure out, oh, tell me how to solve the puzzle to get it. No, 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 no. But. I'm going to at least know the location. So, like, that Korok mask doesn't matter to me. But the Phantom Armor, ooh, looks good, and it actually will make a difference for me in the game, whereas the other things I feel like are more cosmetic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it gets me excited uh, because someone pointed this out to me in a video that I made uh, talking about, like, what all of the new masks and armor does. I made a complaint mm -hmm. that the Phantom Armor only had a base defense of eight i believe on mm -hmm. everything yeah which in my mind i upgraded everything long ago so yes, thinking yes. about like the, what the base numbers was for everything was like none of that was in my mind and someone pointed yeah. out that eight so be like, you're going to be able to upgrade yeah it. like the yeah. eight uh defense stat that the phantom armor <laughs> has is actually higher than anything else in the game so if you yeah, do upgrade as a base it, stat, yeah, yeah, like if you are able to upgrade it, then it'll have as a complete set is it the high highest defense than anything else. Is it is it higher than the ancient armor base? Uh, I can look it up. That was quick. the that was the best before, I believe, for the base set. And I think I, it's the best at max in terms of defense. I thought the base of the ancient was thirteen. Maybe I'm just misremembering. Yeah, I, I can't remember because I never completed the full base set. Mm -hmm. in my run. I only had two of the pieces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, there's so much still left for me to do. That's what's so exciting for me. And I'm going to be doing it in the hardest mode. I'm going to be building a new village in the hardest mode because I've never done it before. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Jesse, did you give your, your favorite of all the new ones? Uh, my favorite um, is obviously... Majora's Mask, just because mm. I'm a fan of the game, but given, uh, it, given. I don't know why I'm on the mask. <laughs> I, I find it interesting that, uh, and they pointed this out in the live stream they did that it is just a replica. A lot of these yes. are replicas and not the actual things. Because um, if you read the description of it, it sounds like it's not a replica. But yeah, um, especially with Tingle's outfit, because it like if you read the descriptions on it, it says something like he treasured this shirt or something not he treasured yeah, a shirt yeah. like this but they yeah. made it clear that the majora's mask in this game is just a replica of the one that used to be or whatever but it only has a defense stat of one and in my head i'm <laughs> thinking in what world is tingle's hat more powerful than majora's mask <laughs> well it's a set so i mean yeah, but I mean, like his hat alone, just Tingle's hat is know. like has a two. Well, in, 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 a, in a world <laughs> where in a world where the Majora's mask is just a piece of wood that's been carved into and thrown on your face. True. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's actually paper. It's like a little paper mache craft, uh, little link. Made. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. It, it's basically less quality than the Majora's mask replica I have sitting on my wall right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I think it, it's it's really great on Nintendo giving the fans what they want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. It's all fan service. Yeah. I mean, that's what these masks like are. Like, you, you can literally be any version of Link that you want, except, like, Kid Link. But, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> there's the Wind Waker tunic, Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, the Retro tunic. Like, it, yeah. it's all there. Like, Fierce Deity, Majora's yeah. Mask. It's literally yeah. the ultimate fan game in terms it's of, awesome. like, uh, items included. Yeah. But. Uh, so let's let's move on to the second DLC right. pack. Uh, we we don't know a whole lot. Uh -huh. uh, it's called the Champions Ballad. It's obviously about the champions. Something to do with the champions. They have new deal. They have I'm sorry, new DLC, new amiibo uh -huh. coming out of all four of the champions, which looks fantastic. Uh -huh. Not a surprise. The, all the Breath of the Wild amiibo are pretty fantastic, which is why they also cost more than the standard amiibo price. Uh -huh. But it's also sad because I know most of you people watching this probably won't be able to get your hands on the Amiibo because they're going to sell out and not get restocked. Thanks, Nintendo. 
I, I, I am not one of those. I actually have all the Breath of the Wild Amiibo, but I, I do not have the 30th anniversary Zelda Amiibo because I didn't get a pre-order in, and they're still not restocked. Thanks. So I, I have a little salt with Nintendo with my <laughs> Zelda Amiibo. Um, this sucks. I don't think I'm ever going to get them unless I make just I make that fat YouTube money and then I <laughs> then I overpay on eBay. Exactly, uh, exactly. That's probably what's going to happen. I got to get those fat stacks going. Um, <laughs> just become PewDiePie. Yeah, yeah. I'm Throw sure away he, millions he on overpriced Amiibo. All the Amiibos. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, so. When I think about uh, this DLC coming up, the Champions Ballad, I, I really wonder, uh, because this is the story DLC, right? There, there's going to be a new story and a new dungeon. Mm-hmm. Um, at least one new dungeon that we know of. Maybe there's going to end up being more. They only confirm one. Yeah. Uh, oh, and it, the, it makes, uh, there was an interview that the voice actress for Zelda had, and they asked her mm-hmm. if Nintendo had contacted her about recording new lines. And she said that she can't say anything. And I would imagine if she didn't have to record lines, she would have just said no that she was working on new projects. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's one of those that like the fat times can't say anything should tell you hint hint. Yeah. Yeah. Wink wink. Um, and I'm sure that's true of all the voice actors for this for this DLC. Unless the only way it wouldn't have been true is if they already pre-recorded it. Um, you know, way back when, and it's just a bunch of unused lines, mm-hmm. but. I, I don't think that's the case, obviously, since we have a pretty good hint that at least the Zelda voice actor came back. So I, I'm i very curious what what it's going to be. I'm, I'm kind of convinced that it's going to be happening 100 years ago before yep. Link was put in the thing. And, and I don't, I'm almost to a point where I wonder, are we even going to play as Link? I, I don't think we are. Or, My theory... My theory, like, with zero, like, obviously you guys are, like, Professor <laughs> Zelda. I'm just a Zelda fan. And I haven't done any research. But we're my thought Zelda is, fans. like, I have a I have a strong feeling that uh, we're going to be playing it as the heroes themselves. I think it's going to be a thing where we play as Zelda, uh, as Link, and then we go to a location, and then it, like, goes, little flashback motion, and then we, like, get to actually play through, uh, like, a, a different variation of the ancient dungeons. And wouldn't it be interesting if, um, I don't know if it'll be a different variation of the ancient dungeons per se. I, I, I think it'll be interesting if the, it, it goes in that direction and you get to play as all four of them because we know all four of them die. Yeah. So it's like we get to actually play, if we get to play up to the moment where we fail and we die, there's no way we can win. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, that would be crazy because Zelda's never actually done that. Like giving it to you, die no matter what. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. how good you are, you're, well, you're dying. Like no, we already know this. Knowing Nintendo, I'm sure I'm 100 percent positive the way they do it is like it's like a two phase boss and phase two you can't possibly win and phase one is like a different type of uh instead of just fighting the boss we actually fought in the main game it'd be like a slightly altered version with different attack animations and stuff. So you'd beat that, and you're like, "Yeah, I won!" And then it goes into super powered mode that ends up uh, Zelda ends up or Link ends up fighting later, and that's what kills you. Yeah, yeah it's my, probably. My guess. I don't even think Nintendo's going to do that. I don't think the Nintendo oh, yeah. has it in them. They're just going to cutscene it. They're yes. going to cutscene the death. That's my uh, suspicion of uh, the four amiibo they're going to use. I immediately thought, in the way that like. I believe it's the way that Kaz is like singing or talking in that scene and then like the mm-hmm. words they used on screen and everything put me in the mind that if you tap the amiibo the same way that you can uh, get Wolf Link beside you, you'll resurrect mm-hmm. uh, one of these champions to help you in battle. <laughs> yeah. Um, That'd be awesome. like, that, would be, that would be sick. Yeah. Or uh, everyone's just going to meet for it. <laughs> as Dreamcast guy was talking. <laughs> Like, where you could actually play as them. I think it'll be something mm-hmm. similar to where it'll spawn them next to you as, like, a non-canon companion character, or it'll actually allow you to play as them. And, uh, like, I talked about something before Breath of the Wild released, because the first thing that Al Numa said about Zelda Wii U, as it used to be known, is that he didn't want you to think of it as a single-player game. Now we know... it is a single player game. But after they showed the Wolf Link uh, amiibo and how it functioned in the game, in my head I was thinking, oh, this would be really cool if, like, on the Wii U or the Switch, whatever you're playing on, if 
You could be playing as Link, and then instead of the computer playing as the AI or as Wolf Link, if mm -hmm. the second player could pick up a controller. Because it wouldn't take anything away from the game, it would be completely optional. It would literally change absolutely nothing about the game, except the second player is controlling Wolf Link instead of the computer, where Wolf Link's already optional. So, like, a lot of people are complaining that they're charging for this DLC, it should have been in the game to begin with. If they did something to where it's like, oh, for the DLC you didn't know about this, but now it's multiplayer, which is what Aonuma said he wanted to do from like the very first sure. thing that he said about the game. And then there was an interview where he said that he wanted to do something like Triforce Heroes with the Breath of the Wild yeah. engine, and having DLC mm -hmm. would be a way for him to test out fan reaction to uh, a multiplayer traditional style Zelda game. So, uh, yeah. A lot better. So. <laughs> so, so, something earlier you said, which really hit a note with me, and I, I actually think you may be dead on, is the idea of summoning them as a companion or maybe taking their form for like 30 seconds or a minute. That 100% sounds correct. One of my uh, my best friends is obsessed with Dark Souls and it definitely seems like there, there are a lot of like echoes of Dark Souls in uh, Breath of the Wild. And that's one thing you can do with Dark Souls. It's like if there are certain areas where you're actually allowed to summon uh, a companion, whether it be AI or a real player. And I, I, I imagine that it'd be uh, AI, but it also there's also the ability in uh, Dark Souls of taking special forms for a short time. There's people who actually sure. like spec. I could totally see the idea of you are still Link. You're not actually becoming these figures, but that actually makes perfect sense. Of like you wave the amiibo and you get to take on their avatar for a minute. Yeah, you. I'm actually curious if because like you guys, you guys are bringing up some some awesome ideas. I never even <laughs> thought of. Um, but I mean, I'm still convinced that like this happens a hundred years ago, and uh, I, I wonder if, like, if they keep it as Link, it's going to be showing the journey of Link and Zelda recruiting the champions mm -hmm. uh, and, and getting them to be part of this whole thing. Because if you think about in the future, all these people blame Link. Like, especially in the Zora area, it's his fault that Mika's Yeah, dead. they're they're racist. Like they're they're, <laughs> they're very they're very racist. They're they're like. The only characters in Breath of the Wild that I can think of that are just straight up racist. Well, but their racism is based on the fact that they blame Link yeah. for for Mifa dying. Um, and if you think about it, that means that Link was really. I mean, obviously, we know that Mifa, you know, has feelings for Link, so there's there's that whole side of things. But <laughs> spoiler warning for those who do, who didn't get past the Zora area yet. Um, but. The it, it's really interesting. I think sh if they went down the path where, well, we're not going to take you away from Link, but instead we're going to show you the journey of recruiting these champions and why these champions are so dedicated to this cause. Mm -hmm. um, and then that obviously brings us, you know, what are the amiibos going to do? I think it would be extremely disappointing if the amiibos just did what the other amiibos do. You just get, drop some random stuff from this guy. Because mm -hmm. um, so I think they could easily do that again. That's a cop out. Uh, as for people who don't think that. This DLC should have been included in the original game, or it should have been included. I, I disagree. I, I, I understand on the hard mode aspect because Nintendo is kind of starting to make that standard with Zelda. There's always a hard mode, mm -hmm. but I also think that there's things we have to consider with this game. Like when they could have made the hard mode part of the game, they were actually porting it to Switch. It, it was probably one or the other at the time. Like, I think a lot of these modes. This content was created after they were already done with the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, like especially with the dungeon that they're working on. Like as soon as they announced a new dungeon for the DLC, in my head I was yeah. thinking, well, it's going to take a year for it to come out because they actually yeah. have to create this dungeon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, even think about the, you know, w when we're talking about oh, this, this content should have just been included in the game. Well, think about the new story and the new dungeon coming in the Ballad of the Goddess. It's like that's or Ballad of the Champions, whatever it is. <laughs> when, like, God, sorry, so many goddesses stuck in my head. Uh, when when they do that, it, it, it's like, look, if that was already done content that should have been included in the game, we wouldn't have just got a trailer at E3 that just showed the same stuff from the game already. Mm -hmm. Like, it was literally just images, flashing images from the game and flashing official art, and then having casts up on a hill. Yeah. So it, it's like... 
that clearly, if they had something to show, they would have shown it to drive hype. They, they don't have it to show it yet. Yeah, there was it's not uh, done. There was also an interview with Al Numa, I believe, with Game Informer, but I'm not sure who it was. It was before the DLC was actually announced. Yeah. But someone asked uh, Al Numa if he had any thoughts on DLC or if they would be releasing DLC for Breath of the Wild, and he said that, uh, like one of those generic PR answers it's like at this time we have nothing to announce but then he also announce, said yeah. if he was to create DLC in the game it would be because uh, he said something along the lines of he fell in the world he fell in love with the world of Hyrule that he's created in Breath of the Wild and he feels that even though the game's coming out which I'm sure every developer has this problem he feels there's more that he could have added to it to like mm-hmm. to try to make well, yeah. it perfect. I mean, there, it, there's always ideas that didn't make it in, yeah. or and deadlines that cause them to cut content. That that's a hundred percent what I think this is, and it's why I'm so happy to pay for it. I I do not in mind. I I'm actually completely against all the people who say that this should have been included. <laughs> I you can very clearly Watch tell for because. Well, oh, well, I, I, I you know what I mean. Feel feel free I, to ang- angrily yeah. tweet me, but and and I'll defend this <laughs> by I think that. The very unique direction of this. I think it's very obvious to me that the entire game was done. They were very, very happy with how well-rounded and complete Breath of the Wild is. But then they're still sitting there with all these ideas, all these little scraps of extra plans they had. So then they just kept working it, being like, you know what? Let's give them some crazy masks. Let's make weird Bogoblin uh, blimps that are going along just to screw up your day. And let's make an entire new area where you start out naked and go through 49 uh, rooms. Like, that is all stuff that... I 100% know did not even start until the game was out of final testing and and freaking uh this new stuff all the the adventure of the the champions that looks cool too I don't know I I I don't like the idea people want everything to be free this is great content and we're supporting Nintendo making more great content so hell yeah yeah I I think the people that are that are salty about this are are the same kind of people that just think DLC like paid DLC in general is bad yeah and I don't know who I don't know when this... I mean, I know there are certain companies that have abused it, of course. Like, Oh, God, yeah. I, there, there's, yeah. there's tons of companies that have made paid DLC have a bad reputation. But it's not always bad. Like, back when I was a kid, it wasn't called DLC. They were called expansion packs. Yeah. And you paid 40 bucks for those things. Yeah. And Ocarina people didn't mind it. was originally supposed to have one. Yeah. Like, it, it, people didn't mind paying 40 bucks. Like, like, Age of Empires, I expanded that thing, like, three times for 40 bucks a pop. <laughs> it didn't It didn't matter to me that the amount of content you got made the whole game feel, like, brand new again, which was amazing. It, it really made that game have legs for years instead of just yeah. being this game that you get for a month and then it's in the discount yeah. bin, which it happens with a lot of games these days. The way I so, look at it... Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. Uh, I was going to say, like, the way that I look at it, especially with Zelda, like, with Assassin's Creed or a Call of Duty or something, it, it gets annoying. Like, there's a new game every oh, yeah. year, and then you have DLC releasing right up until, like, a month or two before the next game comes sure. out. But with Zelda, it's like Twilight Princess took four or five years to come out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Skyward Sword took another five years to come out. Breath of the Wild took six years, I believe to come out five and a half five and a half five years and a half. to come out yep. it's like would you rather breath of the wild just release and that be it and then like five six years from now you play whatever they've been working well, on since then or would you want them to be like hey 90 percent of our team is working on the next zelda game look forward to it but until that happens we have this small team of five ten people working on this thing that didn't get finished or this ideal they had but couldn't complete before the game came out so we're going to give you this with the team that still worked on breath of the wild but you're also going to get the next zelda game that's currently being worked on when it's finished See, I, and i think a lot of people's counter argument is going to be well we shouldn't have to wait six years for the next zelda. <laughs> it should be every three um and i mean you know if other studios like they can get uncharted's out every 2 to 3 years you know yeah. why can't you get zelda out? well i think uh, and, and there's a whole lot of reasons that zelda's always taken a long time yeah. you know changing engines all the time changing platforms like it's it's difficult yeah uh some of some i mean some of it's on the zelda team they make it more difficult than it needs to be but I think this is a good way to segue into our last topic because we've already briefly talked on it a little bit. What the future of Zelda after this DLC is out? You know, I, 
What's going to happen? I think, I think they already have a lot of plans written on a chalkboard somewhere in Japan <laughs> for what the next main game is going to be. <laughs> But I think next up we're going to get another remake or a port. I think we're going to get, like, Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword HD is due, yes. Yeah, I think we're going to get that. Or or I, and I base this on nothing, but I would love to see a Wind Waker port or remake or something. Like, that's still one of my favorite ones. And I imagine, like, we've seen them already completely invent several 2D Zelda engines. I feel like combining... Uh, like the Link Between Worlds engine with uh, 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 Link's Awakening, just smush those together like a delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and you'd sell 10 million <laughs> copies. <laughs> yeah. Well, you we probably wouldn't sell 10 million. No Zelda's ever sold 10 million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe Breath of the Wild would be the first. That would be amazing. I think that's yeah. what Nintendo has always stated publicly in the past. Like, they want a Zelda game to hit that 10 million mark. Yeah. So we'll, mm-hmm. we'll see. That would be really uh, good, ha- not just for Nintendo, but for any first party game. That's oh, just yeah. releasing on like one platform to reach ten million. That'd be really good. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, I, Breath of the Wild might be just be that tentpole game where for years every person that buys a Switch just buys that game to go with yeah. it. Yeah, especially and, if um, Nintendo does something in like two years from now, when like Breath of the Wild's now like a twenty dollar game, which Nintendo it, never it really be. does. It, it'll be a sixty dollar yeah. game for like five years. But like, if they ever yeah. made that like a pack in game. Like how you can go and buy oh, sure. Uh, sure, like, like a, a PlayStation bundle. Four with Uncharted Four. Like if you yeah, could get just, just bundle it. Yeah, like especially for this holiday season, which they're probably not even going to do that because it's well, still no, a new console. I, I could see them. I could see them next holiday season doing a Breath of the Wild. Boy. Yeah, but I think if any game has a chance, it's Breath of the Wild because they already released a statistic that like more Breath of the Wild Switch copies were sold than actual Nintendo but, Switches yeah, at one point. In, the, in that first month. I'm actually really curious. This week, it might, it might be happening right now, we're supposed to be getting a sales update on uh, Switch and Breath of the Wild and all that stuff at a meeting in Japan, Fester's meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, have to, I think that's actually happening tonight or tomorrow. I, I have to look it up, but it's... So, like, who knows? That that statistic still might be going on. There still might be more, especially in North America, where Switches seem to be the hardest to find. Yeah. Um, but as um, for future Zelda games, or yep. Zelda's future in general, I've made yep. a couple of different videos where I talked about this, but I honestly believe um, that, like, next year is 2018. It'll be the 20... No... 20? Wait. Yeah, 20 year anniversary of Ocarina of Time. Yep. I think that'll be the perfect time, more perfect than probably any other time, to release an HD version. And the work's already done for them. Like, if they can take games as complicated as, like, a Wii U game, like Hyrule Warriors or the Yoshi's Woolly World, port them to a 3DS, which is Mm -hmm. far inferior (laughs) than a Wii U. Then they would have absolutely no difficulty taking a simple 3DS game and putting it on a Nintendo Switch. Like, uh-huh. they might have to recode some stuff, yeah, but like... They'd, they'd have to retexture, because funny yeah. thing about the, the that is it's actually easier to downscale than it is to upscale. Upscale, yeah. you have to create entirely new assets. Yeah, yeah. but um, I, like, I fully expect that to happen, because... Like they said with Breath of the Wild, the reason it took so long, the reason it had so many delays was because they kept on having issues with the physics engine. They've released Breath of the Wild, so to them, maybe it still needs a few minor adjustments, but for the most part, it's already perfected, which means Mm -hmm. the hard work's already done if they want to use the same art style. They have like the textures for the grass, the overworld buildings, all of that. So they don't really need to recreate any new textures. So they can just, like, lay out the floor map for, like, new temples or new dungeons and then use, like, the old textures for the walls and the grass and everything and have pretty much the game already there, similar to what they did with Ocarina of Time, to Majora's Mask. And the way Breath of the Wild ends with, um... Am I, am I allowed to spoil... Mm-hmm. It's been a couple months. I think yeah, been... we're fine. Okay. This is this is a Zelda show. If you're not, uh, if you're afraid of spoilers, you probably shouldn't be watching. All right. Well, I I'm not sure if it's the true ending or just the normal ending that you get. But I know one of them, when it ends, it's Zelda Link talking in the middle of Hyrule Field, 
Zelda's looking at the Sheikah Slate, and she's like, Oh, the Divine Beast is messed up. We Let's go check on it, Link. And then, like, she says something about talking to the Kings or whatever his name is, Mipha's father. So then, like, yep. you head out in his direction, and the game ends. And that, yep. like, Nintendo set that up to where it's like, either the DLC is going to hint at something that happens after the game, uh ends or the next game is going to pick up two or three months or a week or something after the game ends <laughs> so like at least that's what the ending tells me but before we get sure. that because that'll probably be like 2019 2020 i think like ocarina of time majora's mask hd like putting the game on the switch makes perfect sense um Doing like a combo pack of Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD on the same cartridge. Like a lot of people would complain being like, oh, I already bought this on the Wii U. Why do I have to buy it again on the Switch? But if it's both on the same cartridge, <laughs> then that would be more of like... Just a... Uh... For something. Just a note on that for people who complain about rebuying. No one's <laughs> making you rebuy it. Yeah. If yeah. you still own your Wii U, just play it. Yeah. No, you don't have to get it again. But like the, uh, the thought of playing Wind Waker on the go in HD or Twilight Princess sure. on the go in HD. Sure. So like any of those four games, like the 3D remakes or the Wii U HD remakes, any of those would be good as like a holdover game until whatever the follow up to Breath of the Wild is. And then what a lot of people don't realize is that while like Smash Brothers may only have one team that works on the game, Metroid may only have one team, if any, that works on those games. Um, Zelda and Mario specifically at all times has two different teams working on two different games. So like there's the handheld Mario and Zelda teams and then there's the home console Mario Traditionally, and Zelda teams. Yeah. Breath of the Wild combined the teams and A Link Between Worlds was made by an outside studio in Grezzo. Mm -hmm. So But but still that that proves that Nintendo is in a phase where they don't mind throwing anybody and everybody at any situation. But they always they always like to have several buns in the oven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know I, I got what he was saying. I was I was yeah. just noting that yeah. technically the team that like did all that stuff uh, wasn't the main Zelda team. But the, that I mean that's not a bad thing. They had uh they have one one of their Zelda guys was directing it and everything. So yeah. same with Triforce Heroes. All right. um, well, typically there's the handheld team. Yeah, and, typically uh, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't until Breath of the Wild that they. That yeah, they did that, so. and if um, like I believe, like if you look back until Phantom Hourglass, it was two years until Spirit Tracks released, which Spirit Tracks did basically the same thing Majora's Mask did, where it reused a lot of the same, uh, yeah, characters yep. and stuff. So, so would say too many. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then it was, I think it was two or three years, three years, I think, until A Link Between Worlds came out. And then it was two years after A Link Between Worlds came out that we got, uh, Triforce Heroes. So, like, if you follow the pattern for the past new four handheld Zelda games, then this year or next year, which obviously not this year because E3's already came and went, but... I think next year is a strong case for the next big 2D Zelda game, which Alanuma okay. hinted at. J just, just as a, just a note, it was almost five years between Spirit Tracks and A Link Between Worlds. Spirit. Uh, Spirit Tracks came out in 2009, and Link Between Worlds came out at the end of 2013. What am I thinking of then? Um, Maybe I got confused with. They had Skyward Sword come out in 2011. And then they had Hyrule Warriors. Ocarina um, was between them. Ocarina was in the launch year. It was 2012. Wait, no, no, that was 2011 too, wasn't it? That was the launch year of 3DS. So it was 2011, summer of 2011. Maybe that's what I was getting confused on. Oh. Yeah. Either way, yeah. like... So that's when they started... The, the Ocarina of Time is when they started doing the remake thing. Yeah, so they... Um, Anyways, they, they we should be expecting in the next year or two um, a new 2D Zelda game, which Alanuma was asked about in an interview, sure. and he said that he wanted to find a way to evolve what a 2D Zelda game is, which is something he's already mm. done, or at least in my opinion he's already done, because yeah. A Link Between Worlds and Triforce Heroes were already 
fully realized 3D models. Mm -hmm. It was just yeah. the camera was fixed so it looked 2D or 2.5D. So I don't know what Al Numa means by he wants to evolve what a 2D Zelda game is, but so kind I, of already did that. You, no, see, I, I disagree. It, it, he hasn't done that. That He's just doing what everyone else does with those style of top-down games now. It's it's all 2.5D, 3D models. They did it with Spirit Tracks. They did it with Phantom Hourglass. It was just lower resolution models. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it's not really an evolution. It's the same gameplay style, just with, you know, better looking models today. Like, they couldn't do that back in the day. It had yeah. to be 2D flat. So, what? Um, so that, to me, that's not an evolution. That's like going from. Well, that, we, I mean, we, we Ocarina of up, Time was an evolution. If, if you were but. if you were to look at a two D Zelda that really pushed boundaries, I think Minish Cap is one that's overlooked a lot. But that sure. shrinking and growing really changed uh, the mechanics of the game, and it added in all sorts of weird puzzles sure. and stuff. And I I think that maybe he means something like that again, of something where the way you look at the game at the start totally changes the way you look at the game at the end. So maybe I'm just shooting yeah. in the dark there. Yeah, Who no. Knows? No, yeah. Well, and, and between more, like this isn't a knock on these games, by the way. I just don't like when you have the wall merging mechanic. That was really cool. You couldn't yeah. do that. Oh yeah, in the we past. see that in but, uh, Mario Odyssey's like borrowing yeah. that. Yeah. So that's but it, it was kind of one of those things where I, I didn't really feel it as an evolution. Um, the game literally plays gameplay wise exactly like the games did back in the nineties. Like like that's not an evolution when, at least to me, when the gameplay is exactly the same, you didn't evolve anything. You just made it look prettier. Okay. Um, so what That's just my just my opinion. Well, but what, what would you like, consider, like, an evolution for um, 2D-style Zelda games? <laughs> what, what they did with Zelda 2. Uh, <laughs> but, but <laughs> I mean, that's something completely different. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe I, you said that was your favorite uh, Zelda games, or one of your it favorites? Used, it, it, Breath of the Wild is now my favorite, but it was, yes, it was my favorite until Breath of the Wild. Um, wow. Wow. Yeah, so getting into, <laughs> that's what everyone said. <laughs> Outside of, uh, Daniel apparently loves Zelda 2 just as much as I do, so I, I have one other person <laughs> out there. One, one, one on my side. Um, I don't know if he's completely on my side. I don't know if he knows how low Ocarina of Time is on my list. Ooh. But, uh, yeah, you know, just just in because you said a lot of things there, Jesse, um, <laughs> which is good. That's good. This is usually me dominating all the conversation, so I like other people doing it. I think the future of Zelda, um, you know, you kind of laid out a roadmap there. Some of it I agree with. Uh, I think next year, I, I I don't think there is more DLC coming for Breath of the Wild. I think this is it. Um, I know briefly someone mentioned earlier. I think it was um, the Dreamcast guy over there about them having, you know, another couple of DLC packs next year. I, I think in lieu of that, we're going to end up getting uh, Skyward Sword HD next year, mm -hmm. just because it's been a little bit since we've had a remake, and that's the last of the 3D games to be remade, and since the Switch supports motion controls, it now makes sense to, to bring Skyward Sword over. It's a cheap thing to do. They can have another outside studio take care of that for them, mm -hmm. um, upresing all the models. So, I, I think that's what they're going to do for Zelda next year, uh, I don't. I, I'm in a confusing place at what they're gonna do with handheld Zelda. Like we talk about 2D, we're really talking about handheld Zelda because they don't make 2D Zeldas really on consoles anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Four Stars Adventures was kind of an outlier that they, they don't do that very often. So I I wonder if the only thing I could think that they might do is because EJ and I was really into this multiplayer Zelda idea. I'm wondering if he's just going to stick with 2D Zelda games to kind of be like his multiplayer playground. Mm -hmm. uh, because I, I don't know... I think everybody now after Breath of the Wild, they don't want a 2D Zelda on their Switch. They want the next big Zelda well, game. If they do it, it's going to have to be so startlingly different that it's still a must-buy. Like, I think if they manage yeah. to make a Zelda Maker, which is something that people have talked oh, about sure, being, sure. being yeah. basic, it's basically impossible to make a Zelda Maker just because there are so many mechanics and pieces that would have to be woven together. And it's how not impossible. System... Have, you heard, have you heard of a game called Legend Maker? Yeah. No, I haven't. Okay, so there's this guy. He started a Kickstarter, but he, he originally called it Zelda Maker himself and obviously changed mm -hmm. it so he wouldn't get shut down by Nintendo. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's literally a build-your-own 2D Zelda game. And I pl I've, I've played the active demo they have of it. It's not mm -hmm. impossible. This guy mm -hmm. on his own made it happen. Yeah, you have enemies, you cool. make dungeons, you make puzzles. Like, it, it's literally you're making a 2D Zelda yeah. game. It's so cool. Fun. Plus there's well. also Zelda Classic, which has let you make your own Zelda game for like 15 years. 
Yeah. Fun fact. Or like even longer, 20 years. For those like that. that may not know, the first Zelda game was intended, it, it was designed for yeah. you to make your own dungeons. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not, I, I didn't mean to instantly shut you down. I, it's just well, when no, Nintendo said that I, excuse that I, it was I too was difficult, only... I'm like, oh my God, I could already go make my own Zelda game. Yeah. And plus, like, I, I think that their fear is, and I'm only I'm only speaking because every time I I do believe that exists and will happen, but every time I say that on a podcast, I get hundreds of tweets <laughs> saying that I'm, I'm an idiot. So yeah, I'm right, counteracting right. myself preemptively this time. But yeah. um, I I 100 think it's it's possible and may happen. I I'm an, I'm extremely on board with it. I think that Nintendo's fear is that if the system isn't totally foolproof they're gonna have uh servers full of broken dungeons <laughs> on day one and that's what they're terrified of well that's what they took care of that with mario by saying you have to be able to beat it before you can upload it mm-hmm. has to be beatable or you can't upload it like, it, like it that, is, but if, that's but all if they, they make have to do it, like, oh you make your own du- like say it's a dungeon maker make your own dungeon well you can't mm-hmm. upload it unless you personally can beat the dungeon yeah, but I think they're afraid of like a switch, uh, a series of switches that you have to like freaking put Funky Town in there or something. Beep beep boop beep boop. It's like, oh, you didn't hit the entire song perfectly. The dungeon's unbeatable. Like, how would I know that? Well, I mean, have you played Mario Maker? <laughs> uh, I don't yeah, think they're sure, afraid sure. of that. If you see some of the levels, yeah. If you see some of the levels of Mario Maker, I don't think that's a concern. I, I think like yeah. if if a dungeon gets too many downvotes or too many flags or whatever, then I think it gets look buried into anyways. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they only feature the ones that people actually care to play, um, but it's yeah. I'm I'm not too worried about that. Just just based on how they handled Mario Maker, I'm I'm not too worried about like if they ever release a Zelda Maker or a Zelda Dungeon Maker. You mm-hmm. know, if they want to just stick to just dungeons, I don't think they're too worried. Yeah. About, I don't think that's a concern. So um, and yeah. I think fans have already that's... proven the concept can happen. But that I think like if we're talking 2D, I think that might be what he means by you know doing something different like. I, to me, it's really hard for Mario right now to go back to 2D now that Mario Maker came out, because anybody can make their own Mario levels in mm-hmm. 2D, and there's so many clever ones out there that Nintendo would never even attempt. That it might feel like any other future 2D Mario game feels a little bit lesser than levels people can already play in Mario Maker. So I, I could see that potentially being like, look, we're not going to really make 2D Zelda games anymore but we're going to give you the ability so you can make your infinite number on your own. And we'll just Mm -hmm. update that periodically with with some new DLC, you know, or whatever. I think that may be kind of what they did with Mario Odyssey, to where it's like, it's a full 3D Mario game, but then it has those 2D Mario elements in it to satisfy the people who are fans of both. Yeah, it's more so like, hey, we know we can't really do this on its own game, but here you go, We'll, we'll throw some... We'll show we can still have that classic <laughs> level feel, but we're not making a whole game out of it yeah. because we know that you know the appeal of that is just not going to be there right now. Yeah. So um, uh, and it could come back if they never port Mario Maker to Switch. Well, the appeal is going to come back because Switch owners obviously aren't playing Mario Maker, mm-hmm. uh, which I don't know why they wouldn't port that to Switch. It feels like a, a no-brainer to me. But I, I think you know. So next year, I think it's going to be Skyward Sword, and I do think they are making a quick turnaround game for Breath of the Wild. I think they always planned that if the game took off, they were going to Majora's Mask this thing yeah. and have a sequel come out two years later. Um, and I think the DLC was just to keep people playing for a year. And I know it would make even more sense to have DLC for another year, but I think Nintendo wants to avoid that, oh, we run DLC up until the new game thing that multiplayer games do. Mm-hmm. Multiplayer games, it makes sense to do it in because you want to keep your player base. But that's why it's a single-player game. Those fans are coming back the next time a game comes out. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the hard um, mode is enough to bring people that oh, yeah. like quit the game or already beat it moved on to like bring them back so yeah so i i think i think we're looking at skyward sword hd i think we're seeing a breath of the wild 2 or some spin-off or something in uh in 2019 i think by the end of that we're, we're gonna get something like that uh just based on i mean the, the, there's not a lot to say it's gonna they've only really done it with spirit tracks and uh, Majora's Mask, so like it's not something they've done often, but I think when they did do it, it was off of two massively popular games. At the time, Ocarina of Time was the best-selling Zelda game ever made. Mm-hmm. Bring out Majora's Mask. At the time, Phantom Hourglass was the best-selling handheld Zelda game ever made. Let's do mm-hmm. Spirit Tracks. And right now, Breath of the Wild is the most successful launch game they've ever made. Time for another Zelda game based on that engine. Um, and I mean, there's exciting things about it because obviously, with it being a switch, I'm assuming it'd be switch exclusive. 
um, you know, they'll be able to do things like if they want to up-res some of the textures, if they want to do, like, a lot of the, the issues that, that they had to hold back because of Wii U, um, they'll be able to g get rid of now. But uh, it, it's something that I, I think is exciting because EJ Anuma in the past has always said he wants to get a new Zelda game out every three years. It's always been his goal. <laughs> new console Zelda every three years. It's, like, never happened. I remember there that's was always a, been a goal. There was an interview when Skyward Sword came out to where it's like, we know we took forever. Or, I'm paraphrasing, but he's like, I know we took yeah. forever with Skyward Sword, but I'm really hoping we can get, like, a three-year Zelda cycle to, cycle yeah. to be the new development the time. norm the norm yeah <laughs> and that obviously didn't happen but a lot of that doesn't happen because they keep rebuilding engines they keep you know built starting from scratch with nothing and i feel like i feel like with the engine they've created in breath of the wild i feel like it's going to be one that they reuse over and over and over again they might not use reuse the art assets but the actual engine that powers the whole game yeah because mm -hmm. i think they're really happy with this engine and you know if they just keep reusing it and expanding it I think you're going to see, you know, the Breath of the Wild 2 just to build off the hype of Breath of the Wild in two years, or in 2019. And then, after that, I wouldn't be surprised if it's three years till the next Zelda. Like, mm -hmm. a, a whole new one that breaks away from Breath of the Wild, just using the same engine as the backbones for it. Because one thing E.J. Nomu has said is that he thinks, or at least he feels like, all future Zelda games are going to be open world. You're not going to rebuild an engine every time you want to make open world Zelda games. <laughs> Uh, the, the, we're going to be waiting like 10 years between Zelda games. It'd be, it'd be so case. costly. Yeah, yeah it, I mean, even if the sales end up justifying it in the end, like I think Breath of the Wild sales have probably already justified it. Um, it's just not something, like why would you do that when you already have the the framework to just keep making them? Yeah. Um, and you, then you could focus on improving it, adding new ideas, like new, you know, stuff into the physics engine or whatever. Um, but anyways, I think they're going to do that and I, I don't think, I don't know what what they're going to do after 2019. I, I don't even know if I can even think that far ahead. Um, I know Jesse talked a lot about Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. I think uh, those coming, they're easier to bring to HD than any 2D game. Like if they wanted to make a Link to the Past HD, you're basically making a whole brand new game. Um, you're trying to Final Fantasy VII that, where they're basically recreating Final Fantasy VII in HD. Mm -hmm. Uh, from scratch, which is really difficult to do, even if you already know, you know, the locations and you have something to base it on. Um, I don't think, I think Ocarina of Time makes sense to, to to remake again in HD. I just don't know. I don't know if it's something they could trust an outside studio to do, um, because unlike like Twilight Princess and the the Wind Waker had a timeless graphic style, and the main Zelda team is the one who did the Wind Waker HD. Um, Twilight Princess, uh, if you Tantalus. look at it, it yeah, Tantalus. Um, even Twilight Princess was a lot easier to bring into to, to realize in an HD format because um, mm -hmm. you weren't dealing with 240p assets, right? You're, you're dealing with 480p um, and just reskinning that. You're almost doing what people do in uh, the, all this Unreal Engine 4 stuff. They import the models and reskin them. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of like what they did with Twilight Princess HD, which it looks great, um, you know. I don't know. It, it didn't feel like it had as much love put into it as the Wind Waker HD, but it also wasn't the main Zelda team. So, I mean, you're not going to mm -hmm. expect that kind of quality from a different team. Um, you know, which is why I'm worried about Metroid Prime 4, but this isn't, <laughs> we're not here to talk about Metroid. Um, but I, I think uh, I think it's a lot more difficult than what Jesse said about uh, to, to bring it because I, the only way it's not difficult is if those assets that they made for Ocarina of Time uh, 2D were originally made in HD and then downscaled. If they were not made in HD and they were only made in 240p, you can't just upscale them. You have to literally recreate those entire assets, which means you're basically recreating the entire game except for the code base, because you can run it on the same code base, port that over. The engine can be ported over, but you still have to recreate all the assets all over again. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I th it can be done, obviously. People do it all, fans try to do this all the time. Why do you think they're trying to recreate Ocarina of Time in Unreal Engine 4? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot. There's a big difference between making a thing look pretty and making it run. I, I think Ocarina of Time is going to eventually... It's going to happen, right? Ocarina of mm -hmm. Time HD is happening someday. I don't know if it's happening in the Switch's lifespan. Not At least not this first Switch. If there's a Switch 2 someday, maybe on that. Uh, just because I think Nintendo's focus right now is going to be 
how instead of us putting filler games out there, right? Let, let's go new game, remake, new game, remake. I think they want to figure out a way to make new games come more often. Um, and which is why I said, I think Breath of the Wild 2 in 2019 and then a new Zelda game three years after that might be the goal. Um, and not like the arbitrary goal like Skyward Sword. It's like, we want to do it, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. I think it's one where like, no, we are going to do it. Like, bank it three years from now. Yes, we're famous for delays, but look, we said Breath of the Wild 2. We announced it, came out same year, so we could do it. Um, that's what I think is going to happen. Uh, that's what I want to happen, to be honest. Plus, I would love to sit here at Havoc in Time HD in 2020, but I don't think it's going to happen. But uh, Anyways, I haven't heard much from Dreamcast on the future of Zelda. What, what, what's going on, my man? Oh, I, I did. I, I outlined uh, all my future projections about 30 minutes ago when we started this time. <laughs> yeah, was, probably. Uh, I, I think it's, mine it's, went, went on a little bit too long, so it kind of made his <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm just like, what am I going get, to get a say in here? Jesse's just going on. He's got <laughs> he's got the whole... He might as well just work for the Zelda team. He's got it all figured out. <laughs> no, like that... I, it was just a video that I made where it was like, okay, before we knew anything about the DLC, in my head I was sure. like, what does 2016 look like for Zelda? What is 2017, 18, 19? Sure. And in my head I was thinking, well, if they do at least one game a year, then Breath of the Wild, obviously coming out 2017, 2018. Sure. Sure. Makes sense for a 20-year anniversary. So, <laughs> yeah. it's, so it's, a nice, it's a nice pipe dream, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. Um, do any of you guys think we're getting more Breath of the Wild DLC after this year? I think if the DLC does like amazingly well to where there's over a 50% attach rate, to where over half of the people that buy the game buy the DLC, then they might do something where they release something else, but who knows. Especially if it's something like... I'm sure there's designs or something, concepts, where... A full dungeon was like 80% completed before they was like, you know, that may not work with the final concept yeah. <laughs> of this game. Which which happens a lot in every single game. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. we're, we're about to get uh, Crash, the new Crash Insane collection on PS4, and there's uh, going to be, there's rumors that they're going to be DLC, that there was like unfinished maps for each game, and they're just going to finally finish those. Yeah, so I think like, in a year's time, if they're like, really money hungry, then they're going to be like, you know, we made a few million dollars on all of that DLC we released and we have this dungeon that's like 80% complete (laughs) that we could just fix maybe a week or two and release to get another million dollars. So I I think there's always that possibility, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't think that exact scenario will exist. Nintendo, if you remember what they did with the Wind Waker, right? We know for a fact, they have said many times, they had to cut content from the Wind Waker. Yeah. When Wind Waker HD was coming out, like, oh, are we going to get that content back? And like, well, we already brought it back in future Zelda mm-hmm. games. Um, so, like, if they have a, a dungeon 80% done, to me, Breath of the Wild 2 makes the most sense to use it. Yeah. Especially if it did fit in with the game in the first place. Did, did you but see... I, uh, sorry, like, that, it just reminded no, me okay. of... Um, during their GDC conference, I believe that was when it was, when it showed, like, the aliens attacking with Link running yep. away. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, I think that would have been awesome to include in the game. Well, I mean, they did that Majora's Mask. So, like, they have a bunch of unused ideas, obviously. Um, what, what I think, obviously outside of whatever they want to say for Breath of the Wild 2, I think it's going to... I don't even know if sales are going to determine if they're going to do more DLC. I think they mm-hmm. already know right now. Uh, because if they're doing story DLC, because I don't think they're going to see a big uptick with this new DLC, right? Like, the most of the people that are going to get this first pack are going to be people that already knew about it. Um... Because a lot of people don't think 20 bucks is worth it for this first one. But the next one, if it comes out, even if it's not big sales right away, but it comes out and people are like, dude, have you seen this new story mode? Like, it just added 100 more hours worth of content to the game. People are going to be all over that. Um, and if that ends up being good, it ends up being great. I, I think Nintendo already has a roadmap where they're like, well, look, we already have another story to tell. Um, and, and this is the the other thing I think could happen with Zelda, and I don't know how I don't know how fans would would be receptive of this, but it could just be for like this entire generation of the Switch, they don't plan to release a new Zelda game. They plan to just continue to expand Breath of the Wild, uh, yeah, and that, that that's, that's something a- I I wonder if they're thinking of that right now. 
Maybe I I don't know that doesn't really seem Nintendo's style. It, oh, it doesn't that, doesn't seem their style. But I, that, I wonder if they decided to do that, would fans be okay with just them being like, "Hey, look, we just have more to tell in this world, so we're going to keep doing it." We've seen a couple couple companies try and experiment with that. Most recently, the Hitman uh, game, where yep. they like released it episodically, and it did yep. not do the well for them financially. So sure. I I think that since so many companies have experimented with it and failed. Nintendo's smart enough to be like, mm, we can make a billion dollars every time we release a main one. It's worth spacing three or five years apart. Sure. It, well, it also depends. Like, um, you know, I don't even, like, no one's going to view this as episodic, I don't think. Like, Breath of the Wild feels like a complete game. Yeah. Um, but I think if they give, if this DLC, this story DLC, ends up being, like, as good as the DLC that, like, The Witcher 3 got. Mm hmm. Because um, the original Witcher 3 game feels complete. It doesn't feel like you're missing anything. Yeah. But that DLC almost felt like an expansion pack, right? It, it was like New Game Plus. Like, like we're, we're doubling the size of the game for 20 bucks. Enjoy. I think it literally, um, like, if you took all of the DLC, like, even that one DLC pack on its own, but, like, if you just took all of the DLC pack, yeah, that literally is, like, a second story just dropped in that's the exact same length of the first story. Like, yeah, they, they they doubled the size of the game over two, like within a two year span of that game being out there, and um, I, I wonder if Breath of the Wild is kind of like one of those things where maybe it won't be the entire lifespan of the Switch. Who knows how long? The well, Switch could be still a big thing six years from now. Who knows? Yeah. But if it, it, it could be one of those things where I wonder if it is going to be the game where they're like, look, this is really really popular, and this DLC we released did really really huge. People really really loved it. What if we just keep releasing bigger DLC like that once a year until we're ready to release a Zelda game? I personally, and, I I would be happy with it. Like they said, they brought on um, a lot of the, I think it was a hundred people, two hundred people that worked on Xenoblade. Yep, they basically brought over the whole team yeah. from Monolith. Mm -hmm. to, it was once they decided they were coming to Switch, they're like, we need help. <laughs> yeah, so like. <laughs> If they did that again to where they're like, hey, we're going to work on this next Zelda game. And then they got someone they've trusted, like uh, Grezzo, who remade uh, sure. Ocarina of Majora's Mask. Yeah, yeah, Triforce Heroes. Yeah. They, they've actually, they've done a lot with Zelda. It's almost like that's their new, it's their new Capcom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, their multiplayer game did a lot better than Capcom's. Anyways, which, which which multiplayer game? Didn't they? Triforce they worked on Triforce Heroes, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. What about it? I was saying like I it did better than uh, Capcom. Oh, than Four Swords. Yeah. Than Four Swords. Um, I would actually want to know because Triforce Heroes did not do very well. But I'm, yeah. I'm wondering. Need, I'm need wondering what uh, Four Sword Adventure. Not not like the Four Swords attached to Link to the Past. You never. You don't know how well that would have did on its own. But yeah. how did how well did Four Swords Adventure? Sell I, I feel like I, I heard more really people. Bad. I think it's the lowest selling, one of the lowest selling, uh, one of the, the lowest selling GameCube, but one of the lowest selling Zelda games. I, yeah, totally it didn't even sell on the store. Yeah, it, it, it sold eight hundred thousand units. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't even blame it on the story. It's that it's a multiplayer game that required a ton of peripherals and extra devices. Yeah, yeah but like it was, it was basically like, Crystal Chronicles. Did it? Yeah, did it, and <laughs> just like Crystal Chronicles was crippled. Well, Crystal Chronicles is amazing, by the way. It's one yeah. of my favorite games like ever, but. God, you need so much crap to play it with yeah. your friends. Yeah. Oh, it's not like you just need like a connection cable. No, no, no. You need the cable. You need multiple Game Boys. It's like, oh my god, this is why I only played Four Sword <laughs> Adventures by myself because it was too complicated. Yeah. Um, I think they, I mean, what, they did something cool whenever they released. Uh, was it like the DX version or just the 3DS version of uh, the Link to the Past Four Swords? They yeah. brought it to the 3DS. One year. I'm I just thought that glancing really at cool. sales of Triforce Heroes. Yeah, Triforce Heroes outsold it. Um, it sold 1.2 million. Um, but again, I also think Triforce Heroes... Like, it's kind of like a different time, different place. I think if Four Swords Adventures came out today and was online multiplayer instead of local, yeah. or even better local multiplayer where you could just use four Joy-Con controllers... Oh, that would be um, cool. I think, I think it would have sold way more than 800,000 units. I think it was very <laughs> limited by... One, it was on GameCube, yeah. which w wasn't very popular. Uh, and two, it was really, really difficult to play multiplayer on it. Yeah. Um, and it was advertised as a multiplayer game. Like, Triforce Heroes is like, nah, you just pick up and play with people online. Yeah. So, Nate. Um, yeah. I have two quick 
questions. Uh, it kind of ties okay. into this. and These questions have never seemed to be quick. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, ho- ho- bo- before we start this, I-, I have to run. I only had an hour to be on the oh. podcast. I do yeah, no, it's cool. I- I've got another, like, four hours to work before do, do before bed, but thank you so yep. much for having me. <laughs> no, no, no they- thanks thanks for joining. Um, I don't. I- hopefully it's not going to last much longer. <laughs> no, 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 no. But seriously, w- w- thanks for being here on Zelda Inquiries, man. It- it's been fun. If everybody wants um, to look me up, I'm just Dreamcast guy, uh, and it's been great yep, talking to everybody. Uh, Always nice to meet new people. Yep, and I'll, I'll get you my email so you can just send me your, your file whenever it's ready. Sure, sure. All right, everybody have a great one. Yep, you too. Night. Right. See you, Dreamcast right, Jesse, guy. Jesse, what, what do you got All for right. me, bud? So, What's your question? So my two questions is ones that I have fun asking everybody. One is, uh, <laughs> like, with the Nintendo being more lenient than they used to be, I think I may have asked you this on a live stream that I did, but I'm sure your audience would Way want to back, yeah, That was, like, a year ago? Yeah. God. So like it was after last E3, yeah. last year. A, uh, okay. Like if Nintendo allowed another third party to work on a Zelda game, who would you want it to be? Because in the past they've had Capcom obviously make Minish Cap, uh, Four Swords, yeah. and some of those. Yeah. They, had, they had Grezzo with Triforce Zeroes. Yeah. They had Tantalus do Twilight Princess HD. Right. And then uh, we also had uh, well, Hyrule Warriors was probably... yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it's a side game. I don't, I don't count. <laughs> like I'm not saying I don't count it. It's not like it's a side dish. It's like the, the Tingle games. It's like yeah, I mean they're cool. They exist, but yeah. that's not why people buy Zelda games. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah. If if Nintendo is just focused on Breath of the Wild and its sequel, who would you want to be working on another like in between game? Whether it was 2D like, or like 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 a new like a brand new Zelda game, not like a remake. Yeah, like a, someone releasing a brand new. Minish Cap type, uh, yeah, game. like a, uh, yeah, yeah, a new mainline Zelda game. Um, hmm. Man, I mean, my real answer is no one. <laughs> I would just like Zelda to come out every three years. That would be nice. Yeah. But um, uh, assuming that they're going to reach out or or would be willing to reach out, I, I'm not sure. I, I almost think that they would reach out to. Uh, one of the top tier indie developers that they work with. Um, as an example, the company behind Shovel Knight could make a very interesting kind of Zelda 2 sequel. Um, with Nintendo funding it, I think that could end up being a really amazing experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and it might even it might be even a mainline game that Nintendo decides they want to do eShop only and just have heavy promotion for it. Um, just because it's cheaper to get out there and then they don't have to worry about, you know, making physical copies. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I think something like obviously I also love Zelda two, so I kind of have an affinity for them to make like a true sequel to that. Um, but I, plus, I mean, I love Shovel Knight and, and you know, everything they've done with that series. Yeah. It's awesome. So I, I think I, that's the direction I would prefer that they go in um, because I, I find it hard to bring in like a big AAA kind of publisher and tell them you're just here's your involvement with Zelda. You get to make something really dinky with no budget. Um, like they did with Capcom, because back then those kind of games were more normal. Like, like even you know, like Game Boy games and th- like they were huge. Like Capcom was still making their own games like that. Yeah. Um, today, I, I don't know if it, it works as well, unless they're going to release it on 3DS. I mean, that's the big thing. Are we talking about a 3DS game? 3DS game, I think they can go to anyone. I, I think anyone's willing to do it. 3DS is 60 million plus install base. Um, but. I mean, I guess that's a bigger question. We never talked about it before. Is Nintendo done making Zelda games on 3DS? I, I think that's a big, big question. I I think they would be. Like, if they were working on a 3DS Zelda game, I think it would have been, like, how they announced Metroid Samus Returns during the Treehouse sure. event. I think they would have been like, oh, here's Zelda. Well, they could be saved. they could be saving that for next year. Like, here's The Legend of Zelda, the first game remade yeah. on 3DS. And then the, they had kind of a routine i would say of doing some sort of announcement during the game awards yeah well and they said they're supporting 3ds past 2018 that's why i think yeah. well they might maybe they're just going to save that for later to try to keep through i mean they're obviously not abandoning 3ds last year 3ds made up 51 percent of all of their profits yeah. so they're <laughs> i mean even even though switch is obviously going to eat into that this year you know it's still until we see that percentage under 40, I don't think Nintendo's yeah. going to start dipping out. I think it would be but interesting I, um, if they did like a dual release. Like you were mentioning if it was just an eShop title. If whenever they get yeah. the Switch eShop going, 
if it was like here's this game you can play it on the 3ds if you have a 3ds but if you have a switch well, you can play. i mean e- eShop is going on switch so well yeah i mean like <laughs> I, for some reason I, I had my mind on virtual on virtual console, console. yeah <laughs> yeah if it's a new game it they don't need virtual console it's just eShop. yeah <laughs> i mean that's the thing that's like if they had the had the people behind shovel knight making a new zelda 2 style one um, that is something you could simultaneously put on 3DS and Switch, yeah. and I think would make a lot of sense for Nintendo. That's why I think them going to a popular indie developer who doesn't presently have like like a new their own new game they're making right now. They're just making updates to the current one. Um, that's a team you approach and say, "Hey, look, we'll give you some money. You give us a year, give us a new Zelda game." Um, and obviously, it'll go through Nintendo for final approvals, but still. Um, that I think that's I think that's the correct approach. Like when you first brought this up, I was like, "Well, Retro Studios, Retro Studios, Retro Studios, yeah. Retro Studios." I, w- I want them to make a Zelda game, but that's not going to be like a small Zelda game. That's going to be a big deal game. Yeah. Um, for for some reason, like you heard me like <laughs> laugh a little bit there in my head. For some reason, like I I, I just remembered uh, the Ubisoft Mario Cross Rabbids. Yep. And I was like Zelda Cross Rabbids or something like that, and I was like, that would, that would just be like the most insane. Ma- no, thing. Ma- Mario can cross into everything. That's what Mario does. <laughs> Zelda, no, there, there's you gotta have a, you gotta limit Zelda a little bit on what it crosses yeah. into. Uh, and uh, Smash Bros. is, uh, I mean, it's in Mario Kart, I, but again, Nintendo IP, kind of a fun thing. Yeah, uh, I, I think you know because we had the, the Zelda, the Hyrule Warriors. I mean, it's possible we get another Hyrule Warriors too. Yeah. Um, especially since Hyrule Warriors, I think it's going to depend on how Fire Emblem Warriors does, of course. Because um, Hyrule Warriors was the best-selling uh, Warriors game in a long time. Yeah, I, I wonder so, if Fire Emblem Warriors came about because they already had it planned, or they seen how well Hyrule Warriors did. Well, they said, yeah, they said in an interview um, that once they started working at Hyrule Warriors and they were getting close to launching it, they didn't have sales yet, but they talked to Nintendo and they're like yeah, we think this is going to go really well. What's next? And Fire Emblem just made total sense. Uh, which it does. Fire Emblem actually makes a lot of sense as a Warriors game. Yeah. Uh, even though it's like it's a tactical... Like I know people are like, oh, it's, t- yeah, but I'm like, it's a game with a whole bunch of fighters. That makes a yeah. lot of sense for a game like, like that. You got a lot um, of uh, Zelda made, weapons Zelda too. made less sense than Fire Emblem did. Um, but if Fire Emblem uh, does really, really well then I don't think they're doing a Hyrule Warriors 2. I think they're going to talk to Nintendo and be like, okay, what other IPs do you have? Yeah. Um, Xenoblade if it does, would be interesting. If it does poorly, they might be like, okay, well, let's make a Hyrule Warriors 2 then. Because Nintendo's going to okay that because Hyrule Warriors had good sales and Nintendo gets a cut to those sales. Yeah. Um, or Nintendo might be like, well, I'll just port over to the current Hyrule Warriors <laughs> and then we'll, see how the, then we'll see how that does and then we'll maybe do a Hyrule Warriors 2 if that does well. Yeah. Um, I think... Yeah, I, again, I, I'm sticking with. I think they should go to a, a now more well established indie developer. Um, I, you know, I even thought about Platinum for a moment, uh, just because they're Japanese and Nintendo with their main IP, um, they still like to stick with. Like Capcom was a Japanese company. Grezzo is a Japanese company. Uh, they like to stick with Japanese companies because they can keep a closer eye on it. But I, I still think it's indie developers as way is where I'd like to see them go. If they if they grabbed an outside studio, yeah, um, I wanted to How say like I didn't mean to like hijack part of your podcast, but oh, it's okay. like uh, that's fine. I which you know because I've asked you a couple of times, but I've been wanting sure. to do like a weekly or bi weekly Zelda focused podcast for a while because just like you, everybody welcome to Zelda Inquiry. Yeah, like, <laughs> it was supposed to be a bi weekly show. It's just I, I can never find the time. Yeah, like I'm um, I'm just like very passionate what, what, talking about. You said Zelda, you had a so. you said you had a second question. Oh, we're both passionate. Oh about yeah, Zelda. Uh, second question. Honestly, I I forgot. I, I knew the first one was the 3D, uh, like not okay. 3D, but like if anyone could work on a third party Zelda game, who would you want it to be? Sure. Uh, my answer, really quick would be yep. Square Enix because I'm a huge fan sure. of Final Fantasy style games and like if they somehow combined like Breath of the Wild they, with Final Fantasy if they 15 could make, type of game I don't think they have the ability to make this kind of game anymore but if they could take how they made Secret of Mana and mash that with Zelda I would be in heaven <laughs> Secret of Mana is like until Breath of the Wild was my all time favorite game period so if they combine that with Zelda I'm I might, I might literally die that day of happiness. Um, but again, Square Enix hasn't made a good Mana game since Secret of Mana, so I, I don't think they Didn't, have the ability to do that. Anymore. Wasn't it a 
Final Fantasy game in Japan, and then they changed it to Secret of Mana. I in I have no idea. I don't. I've never looked into the history of it. I just love that game. Yeah. To <laughs> I'm not really sure. Um, I I know I know most of the people that made it are no longer at Square Enix anymore. Like the company, the, the division they had that did it kind of dissolved. So. Um, that kind of, that's why, like, yeah, they tried Capital. They had a Secret of Mana 2, I think, which wasn't that good. They had Children of Mana and some other spinoffs, but it just, nothing recaptured what Secret of Mana was. Yeah, I know uh, it has a huge fan base, so. Oh, it is such a good game. If they combine that with Zelda, I'm, I, used to, I mean, uh... even if I know it's not going to be as good, I don't care, I'd still <laughs> die. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we'll just kind of wrap things up there. Obviously, this went a little longer than I thought, but yeah. that's just the way it goes. Where that's what happens when you get people together who are passionate about Zelda. We could talk about Zelda all day long. Uh, obviously, uh, Dreamcast guy dipped out early. You can check out his channel down in the description below. I'll probably even give him some creators credit on this, just so you guys know that hey, look, I have other YouTubers that like we're here. Go check them out. <laughs> Um, obviously, uh, you know, you can check out their Twitter. I'll have their Twitter handles down below as well. And also, uh, in the description of these videos. So like on, on screen, you guys can just type in their Twitter handle and you'll be able to find them on Twitter. Uh, obviously I want to thank game over Jesse for being here. Uh, and thank him a lot. Cause he's the one who got dreamcast guy on. <laughs> yeah. So he basically made this happen. I just do all the work to make it come to you. <laughs> yeah. So all the editing and all the, all the, the, the hard part. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what I get to do. <laughs> and for the people watching, didn't mean to take over the show from Nate. Just kind of <laughs> happened. Yeah, no, it's okay. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Zelda Inquiries. And in the comments below, let us know, um, is this a show that you would like to see come out more often? Because right now, uh, you know, Game Over Jesse talked about how he's always wanted to get like a bi-weekly or weekly thing going. Um, and he, as I said, he's got his own YouTube channel. Go check it out. He, he does a lot of great videos. Um I, Zelda Zelda's obviously a very passionate thing. Uh, a lot of you viewers know, and maybe some of our new subs don't, but but a lot of our longtime subs know. I ran Zelda Informer for eight years. I've been running Zelda sites for 18. Um, right now, based on my exit contract, I can't run another Zelda site for a decade. So this show is what I have left. <laughs> um, and I am very, I'm very passionate about the series, but I don't want to keep creating content uh, that that our viewers on YouTube don't don't want. Like, if you didn't enjoy this episode of Zelda Inquiries, let me know. Um, not because I, I don't, not because I'm going to cancel the show, but it'll let me know I need to reformat it. Maybe I need to get it more structured. Maybe it doesn't need to be so long. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, whatever you guys want to happen, let me know because this is a series I'm passionate about. Um, Maybe and I don't want to my tell channel... Jesse to shut up from time to time. <laughs> well, the thing is, if I was under a stricter time limit, I, I probably would have like cut you off one point. Like, hey, we got to move on. Um, but it, just let me, I, I want this show to be not just what I want it to be, but what you guys want it to be. You know, do you want it to be bi-weekly? If it's bi-weekly, you, you just heard Game Over Jesse say, hey, he wants a bi-weekly show. Maybe we can collab and try to make that happen. Um, but I don't want to commit to anything yet because it is a, a longer show. It's longer to edit. I have to dedicate the time to do that. Uh, right now, I'm personally, just so the viewers know, I'm looking at trying to make this at least once a month. Um, if you'd like it twice a month, that's great. I mean, you'll let me know by how much you view it, how much you care, your comments. Uh, because I, one thing I, I never wanted to happen with Nintendo Prime, now that we have you know an expanded YouTube channel, is I don't want us to just be a Zelda-focused Nintendo channel, if that makes sense, folks. Um, I don't want to just make a whole bunch of videos about Zelda, and just everything else feels like a side dish. You know, I, I would truly want to cover all of Nintendo, but I this show exists because I can't deny my past. Zelda's my favorite franchise of all time. So I feel like even if I didn't have that past running Zelda sites, if I created a YouTube channel back in 2007 and made a Nintendo channel, I feel like I would have had this show anyways. I feel like this is a natural thing I just would have had. Um, so I just want to know how often do you guys want it? Did you enjoy the show? Is there things you think we can do better? Um, if you want me to punch Jesse in the face, that's fine. Um, <laughs> You want me to punch myself in the face? That's fine. Some of you guys get tired of hearing me talk, which then I wonder, why are you at Nintendo Prime? Because I, I do like 99% of the talk. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, always like, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the, our two guests. And comment below. Let us know what you think. Uh, follow us on. You can follow uh, Nintendo Prime on Twitter, at Ninty Prime. Uh, you can follow me personally. I have a separate Twitter account from the, the public one, uh, at Nate Jantz. Uh, you want to plug your Twitter handle over there? Yeah, everything for me. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everything slash Game Over Jesse. Keep it real simple. 
There you go. And I think it's slash Dreamcast guy. Yeah, yeah. For yep. So just slash Dreamcast guy. And don't worry, his channel isn't just about Dreamcast games. Um, I check I already checked it out before we started. He does a lot of stuff for a lot of different games. Uh, he doesn't pigeonhole himself, which is exactly what I'm trying. I'm not trying to pigeonhole myself as a Zelda channel, but uh, again, I have a passion for Zelda. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And yeah, we'll we'll catch you in the next one whenever it is. July, maybe in two weeks if you want it. In two weeks. You guys let us know. I create this show. We create this show for you. Have a good one.